Hello friends, in the series of learning computer organization and design, today's topic is focused on understanding the parallel processing. So let's start understanding about what is parallel processing and how we can achieve the parallel processing in the modern machines. So as the name specifies parallel processing, so it means that when your system is able to execute some concurrent events, in the computing process to achieve the computational speed, right? Then we can say that the parallel processing is achieved. Or in simple language, I could say that when your system is having the capability to process multiple operations at the same instant of time, then you could say the system is having the facility of parallel processing in it. Now the point is that why? Why do we need uh, to have the parallel processing so the answer is also very obvious because we want to speed up the computer processing capability so basically why do we uh, rely on the modern machines because their execution rate that their throughput rate is very high right so this is the basic uh, point why we are working on enhancing the capability of the machines so the basic purpose of parallel processing is to speed up the computer capability of processing the data and to increase its throughput, right? So the point is that the amount of processing that can be accomplished during a given interval of time, that is the point which we want to achieve through, through the parallel processing techniques. Now there is another question, what are the various ways or what are the various levels where we can approach the parallel processing? where the parallel processing can be implemented. So here are certain examples. You can achieve the parallel processing at the program level when number of programs uh, you are running on a concurrent basis or parallelly, right? Let's suppose P1 and P2 and P3 are the different different programs or the jobs. When your system is executing such kind of jobs on a parallel basis, or on concurrent basis, you could see it is achieving the, it has achieved the parallel processing. Then you can also do multiple tasks at the same point of time. In that uh, point also, you could see that the parallel processing is achieved. So this is the another example, or uh, we are learning the levels of parallel processing. Then we can also achieve the uh, parallel processing at the instruction level when we are executing the instruction within the machine, right? So that instruction, if my system is having the capability to work upon multiple instructions, to execute multiple instruction at the same time, then I could say my system has achieved the parallel processing's capability. Same is the thing for inter and intra level instructions, right? So whenever the instructions are executed by the external devices also. So when uh, the your system is having the capability to execute multiple instructions together, then I could say the parallel processing is being uh, followed by that particular machine, right? So with this, we have understood that what is parallel processing? Why do we need the parallel processing and what are the various levels where we can apply this parallel processing technique. Now is like how we can further differentiate that this kind of parallel processing is uh, being achieved at the lower level and what kind of parallel processing can be achieved at the higher level. So the lower level processing we have already learned like the shift resistors, the resistors with parallel load that we were studying in the very first unit, right? When uh, the system was, uh, the resistor was having the capability to load the data on a parallel basis and to use the same data, then I was saying, okay, this is the kind of parallel, we are executing some process on the parallel basis. So such kind of uh, levels, are, uh, such kind of parallel processing falls under the category of lowest level. And what could be the highest level or the higher level then? When multiplicity of the functional unit that perform identical or different tasks. When 
there are some there is a function unit you could say there is a some function been there which has been performed or uh, which is been done by different different tasks on the parallel basis then i could say at higher level uh, we are achieving the parallel processing so otherwise in order to understand the concept of parallel processing or the parallel computers there was a scientist the name uh, of the scientist was the flynn so flynn has given a classification uh, through which they uh, we can uh, easily distinguish among the different different behaviors of the parallel computer okay who are who have adopted the parallel processing so what does the flynn's classification basically depicts it is based on the multiplicity of instruction stream and data stream so this is important point to understand because what we are doing in case of parallel processing when i am saying the number of tasks or number of jobs or the programs can be executed at the same point of time or concurrently then we can say it is a parallel processing but what exactly is happening there when the tasks are being executed on a parallel basis it means that the number of instructions are actually been executing on the parallel basis so that is why we the flynn has classified the uh, his uh, his architectural approach to determine the parallel process processing in the form of instruction streams and data stream so what happens is sometimes some computers are having the capability to work with multiple instruction streams at a time okay and uh, the few computer or the other computers are having the capability to work on the multiple data streams so depending upon these two uh, categorizations we are able to or to distinguish this flynn's classification of the parallel computers in four different parameters okay so we will learn them uh, again uh, uh, just in a little in a while but before that what is instruction stream sequence of instructions read from the memory so whenever we are able to read the memory some instructions some group of instructions so stream it is so when some number of instructions are being read from the memory then i could say it is an instruction stream so what is the data stream operations performed on the data in the processor so within the cpu some data is available so when we are able to apply certain operations on them then i could say it is falling under the category of the data stream so according to flens we have segmented the uh, the architecture in two forms number of instruction streams okay now the instruction can be a single instruction or multiple instruction same is the case with the number of data streams so the data stream can be single also and can be multiple also so based upon this what we have achieved is single instruction single data this is what the point is okay so same is the case here single instruction stream and multiple data streams same is for this third multiple instruction streams and the single data stream same is the last one multiple instruction streams and multiple data streams so these are the four classifications which flings have given to us which is uh, the base of you could say that understanding the parallelism or the parallel computers functionality in the machine so let's understand about these uh, flings classification techniques in more detail so here is the very first one which is consisting of single instruction stream and single data stream so it is actually s i s d single instruction single data so what kind of mechanism it would be having actually the sist kind of architectures for the parallel processing is not very high or highly advanced kind of uh, of uh, architecture which is uh, providing me the parallel processing capability reason being because here we are having only one instruction stream okay so this is what exactly is the central processing unit 
the central processing unit is having the control unit and its own processing unit, right? So actually, this is the complete uh, CPU. So what is happening? The control unit is executing some instruction stream, some instructions, and the it is a two-way communication. So both memory and control units are communicating. And the same, the memory and the processing unit is having the capability to talk through the one data stream also. So single is the instruction stream and the single is the data stream. That is why the name is SIST. So what are the various characteristics of this uh, kind of uh, approaches? Single computer containing a control unit, processor and memory unit. So where we can uh, adopt this single instruction stream and single data stream? When you are having OX system, which is consisting of one control unit, one processor and one memory unit only. So means the normal computer machines are working on this capability of achieving the single instruction streams and single data stream. Moreover, the instructions and the data are stored in the memory and executed in sequential basis. So this is the important point because this is a normal computer. So where the data and the instructions are stored, definitely in the memory. So how they are being executed one by one in a sequent, uh, sequential manner. So this is the another characteristics of the syst kind of architecture. Then it's not like uh, here the parallel processing will be present for sure. Okay, because the instruction stream is also one, the data stream is also one. And we have defined that in case of parallel processing, what we need to do is the capability is that some number of operations, whatever the task or the operation it is, okay, that should be executed parallelly. So here, because there is only one, one point available, right? So we can, may or may not achieve the parallel processing. So what if we have to achieve the parallel processing in such kind of scenario? We need to work with the new technique which is called as which is calling called as the pipelining so what is pipelining and uh, how do uh, the pipelining work in the modern machines that we will discuss in the next upcoming session for sure okay so for the time being how the single instruction stream and single data stream is able to provide the uh, the parallel processing it is only through the pipelining process so let's move, it, move ahead. This is the next aspect or the next architecture, which is consisting of single instruction stream and multiple data streams. So when this is uh, entirely your the architecture of your uh, multiprocessors, uh, you could say where the number of processors are available. So what is happening? The control unit is executing a single instruction to all of these processors. So what is happening? Uh, in return, when the instruction stream is one, there is only one instruction stream which is been given and shared among all the processors. These processing units will have the capability to work or to define different different data streams. So this will uh, provide its own data stream. This second processor will provide its own data st stream. Same is with the last. So that is why this architecture is known as single instruction stream and multiple data streams because multiple data streams are being uh, provided here in order to uh, deal with the memory right then that's why we are calling this architecture as a summit kind of architecture so what is the basic characteristic of such kind of ar architecture only one copy of the program exists so definitely instruction is one only so it means there is only one instruction for that instruction the one program is been executed there is only single controller that is executing one instruction at a time so definitely the control unit is one only one instruction so based upon that instruction that instruction is been taken by different different processors in a different different pace and accordingly they have executed their own data based upon the instruction stream so this is what the point is in regard to single instruction stream, multiple data stream. Then there comes the next uh, point or next architecture, which is consisting of multiple instruction streams and the single data stream. 
we also called it multiple instruction single data mist so where this kind of architecture can be followed if you remember uh, the architecture which is which was based upon a symmetric one okay so what we were doing there every processor is been provided with its own a uh, local memory right so these memories are able to provide the instruction streams so different different instruction streams would be provided here but how the data will be executed based upon those different different instructions the data will be processed through the one stream only because the main memory is only one the shared memory is this only so through the shared memory we are having only one data stream available that's why even if multiple instructions are been executed by the machine by different different processors they all will have to work on the same data stream so that's why this kind of architecture is actually not existing on real time basis so uh, that's why this is also been mentioned here in the characteristics there is no computer at present that is classified as this mist kind of architecture because if multiple streams are been executing then it is not easy that that uh, instruction is to be executed by the single data stream okay so this was the point now let's discuss about the last point which was which is multiple instruction stream and multiple data stream so this can be a uh, the a realistic approach also when the same point when the multi processing uh, uh, in the multi processing machines what we are having is processors and their memory processor and their own local memories right so they are connected through the shared memory using some interconnection networks being it time shared being it uh, you could say that the multi port being at the cross point right so the point is that through all these different different interconnection systems they are connected together so every processor is having the capability to generate its own instruction stream and on data stream so that's why the name is multiple instructions multiple data streams mem so execution of multiple instructions on multiple data will happen definitely every processor will work upon its own data and will work on executing its own memory instruction so broadly such kind of architectures are divided like shared memory and message parsing multi computers so if you remember message parsing was also the asymmetric one right so when where the memory is actually distributed so that's why we are using this kind of architecture in both shared memory multi processors and the message passing multi processors so with this guys the flens classification is over and i hope that you are able to understand the concept of parallel processing thank you so much for joining the session